America and Russia are not the only countries with nuclear weapons. During the Cold War, the UK, France and China publicly declared the existence of their own nuclear arsenals. Since we entered the 21st century, we have confirmed the existence of nuclear weapons programs in countries throughout Africa, the Middle East, South America and Asia. Nukes are steadily proliferating. The 21st century is paying for the 20th century's failure to plug the holes in the NPT and for the IAEA's failure to tighten nuclear control measures. The IAEA was established in 1957 to oversee peaceful as well as military applications of atomic power. But the IAEA can only investigate those countries which request an investigation. Furthermore, the timing of the inspection must be approved by the country in question. They are not allowed to do sneak inspections. The country that is being investigated can even dictate the nationality of the inspectors that they will allow in. In the late 1970s, Iraq would only allow inspectors from Bulgaria and Russia to enter the country. The IAEA does not even have the authority to level fines against countries who have committed infractions. After the Gulf War, they discovered that Iraq had been developing nuclear weapons in secret right under the investigators' noses. Unfortunately, as an organization, the IAEA just did not have the teeth to effectively stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons and technology. In 1970, all five nuclear powers, America, the Soviet Union, France, England, and China, signed the NPT. The treaty provided that the non-nuclear equipped countries could receive assistance for peaceful applications of nuclear power, but military applications of nuclear power were strictly prohibited, and the IAEA was given the responsibility of investigating countries who were suspected of being in non-compliance with the NPT. But the IAEA could not stop the proliferation of nuclear weapons either. Not only couldn't the IAEA levy any penalties against violating nations, but it became impossible to distinguish between technologies which would lead to military development and technologies which were for civilian applications.